Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me for Low Key uh, Qigong Tai Chi. My name is Karen Renzi. I'm one of the instructors at the Casco Bay branch of the YMCA of Southern Maine, Freeport, Maine. And uh, all you have to do today is to just remember to go slowly and to do the movement small. Don't, don't go to your extreme or your largest, but it's about exploration. And today's theme is actually talking about expansion and contraction. I'm beginning to realize that um, because it's a movement, it's a whole body movement. It's like everything opening up and everything, you know, um, like drawing back on itself or, or, you know, just opening and closing. Um, and I'm realizing that I do this thing where I expand, but I expand with force. And uh, the expansion in Tai Chi and Qigong is really about your intention. It's like, uh, it's like a, in your imagination. It's not truly a force because then you're using your physical body, physical force. So we're just gonna kind of play with that like, uh, today. So you're welcome to do it, uh, the class seated. You're welcome to do it standing. You're also welcome to do it uh, lying uh, flat on the floor as well. Um, and just make sure that you're not in too soft, uh, like if you're in bed, that there's not too many pillows or it's too pillowy soft so that you have freedom of movement, there's no restrictions and you're not sinking into uh, the mattress as well. All right, so just take a breath and just all, welcome all the little bits of you, right, back in to this present moment, to you in your space. And just notice what you're noticing, what's showing up right now. Maybe your feet, maybe your sit bones, Maybe you're noticing, oh my goodness, you know, I'm still a little hot for being outside. So just notice whatever it is. Maybe you're noticing your clothes. And then just soften into that or allow it to be, right? Hmm. All right, and slowly open your eyes. And again, just scan with your breath, with your attention from the top down, all the way down to your feet, and then all the way back up again. And again, you don't have to do it at my speed, you can do it slowly, you can do it faster. And you can also move around to just check in with your body to, because a lot of times we don't notice until we say, oh, I'm a little kink there, oh, this is not moving as well, oh, this is like moving well, and so just notice whatever is showing up for you. All right, and then relax. And we're gonna go ahead and just rub our hands together to generate that chi, and we're gonna bring that energy right into our kidneys. So on either side, right behind the belly button, on either side, we're just gonna bring that heat or that energy right into our uh, kidneys. And then we're gonna come bring the hands right here into the kidney meridian, which is underneath the collarbone in the center of the chest. And I can tap it alternately, or I can cross my hands and tap. And take a breath. And then go ahead and tap the chest. It's the perfect chest to stimulate the thymus gland. This is for to boost your immune system. And then we're going to go ahead and just tap down either side of the sternum. And I can already feel that vibration because I'm tapping pretty firmly, and I can feel that vibration go right through my lungs, right? To loosen up whatever is going on underneath the breast and out to the sides. Again, just whichever way you would like. Just soften the shoulders with that tendency to hike the arms up, but just kind of try to relax and lengthen the neck so the ears can away. And then go ahead and just bring your hands up and over the ears, and just tap right over. And then go ahead and unroll your ears. You're gonna stimulate the 400 acupuncture and reflexology points in the ears. And when you get down to your ear, we'll just give them a little nice massage as well. All right, and then just go ahead and just take a, again, just scan with your attention from the top all the way down to your feet and back. And again, you can go beyond the head and feet as well. You just notice that maybe your hands are warmer, what else is changing and shifting for you. And let's go ahead and bring one hand in front of the shoulder and with slight pressure, drag it all the way across and off the opposite. Okay, so I tend to do it with a little flare. You don't have to do that. You can do it gently. So we're getting the energy to go across the midline of the body because when you're under stress, the energy doesn't cross the midline. And the two brain hemispheres cannot talk to each other as well either. I mean, they're talking, but not as well, right? So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a Wayne Cook's posture. 
So you're going to go ahead and bring one arm and one leg, the same side, over the other side, okay? And you can interlace your fingers if you can. You can bring it up here, or you can actually bring the leg up and then grab one hand, the top hand grabs underneath, and the other hand grabs the top the ankle. And again, check your posture. Then where is it? How are you like, forcing yourself to sit upright? Are you, like, is this too much of a strain? Again, if this is too high for you, you can always slide the leg underneath so that you are, uh, so you're just lowering the leg so it's not too much of a stretch at the outside. Um, or you can just cross the ankles and you do that. But take some exaggerated breaths. And again, just notice what is showing up for you. Are you noticing more tension here or there? And then I go to the other side. So the other leg and the other arm comes across. And again, you can do the same thing. You can bring that leg up and do some exaggerated breaths. Or you can just keep the ankles crossed and the hands crossed. So you can play with that theme that I uh, introduced today of expansion and contraction and think of yourself as an elastic so you're expanding you're stretching that elastic but not with force you're not doing it physically okay you are well, a little bit of physical but then you come to a point where it's like uh, and you feel that force so soften and continue with your mind or imagination that that's continuing on to go a little bit further and then when you contract and you can just Right? All right, so we're going to finish the Wayne Cook's posture. This on scrambles the brain energy and gets the body's uh, figure eight pattern flowing again. And then we're going to just make sure that the energy is flowing from one side of the body to the other by steepling our fingers together. And we're just going to go ahead and inhale up. And then go ahead and just send that from out to the side. And then we're going to open up the crown as well. So gently press in right here at the center and pull apart. So again, my hair is fixed. So just going to do it energetically if you want to do that as well. All right, that's the crown pull. So opening up this big vortex of energy up here. All right. And then now we're going to go ahead and zip up. So you can think of you just wearing a winter coat. Wouldn't that be lovely on a day like today? It's 80, it's going to be 80 or something degrees or 90 degrees outside. So think about zipping up that coat or maybe a lightweight jacket, right? Even a spring jacket feels heavy, right? And then once you've zipped up, so you're just pretending you're zipping up, and the third time you're going to zip up all the way to your lower left, you're going to pretend you have a key and you're just going to turn that key and you're going to lock that energy. Okay? And then we're going to do the hookup. So you're going to use your middle fingers and just, you know, move your middle fingers around a little bit or move all your fingers around to wake up the hand as well. But just notice with your intention and attention to the middle finger, the middle finger may feel a little bit longer than the rest of the finger. So one middle finger inside the belly, the other one in between the eyebrows, so gently press in and lift. Again, I like to sit back and relax. Again, you can, you know, what's comfortable for you, right? So just notice what is comfortable for you, what you would like to create. All right, and then go ahead and release everything. So that connects the two energetic points, one the front, um, central meridian and the other one is on the back so governing meridian so it connects those two points and it's called it's also called a hookup just like wing puts uh hookup as well but this one hooks up energetically um not acupuncture points well way sort of does energy as well um so just take a breath and now notice the theme is expansion contraction notice when you take a breath in there is a physical expansion as well, right? But if you if you think of it like you're you're a balloon using your imagination and you're going out in all directions, again don't force, just use your imagination, but relax within that imagination. So not with force, you're not arching your back, you're not blowing yourself up, you're just expanding to let the air come in and then squeezing the air out the chip. So you just you're just coming back. So um, um, one of the uh, Tai Chi masters in China, Taiwan, um, he always said that this expansion is like waking up. 
And then collapsing or contracting or condensing is more like falling asleep. So waking up, just you can follow along and just again, just feel that sensation. You're just softening, right? You're sinking into the earth. And now you're inhaling, you're inviting all sorts of energies that come alive, right? Waking up. And you can almost feel the flow, the ebb and flow of the movements, just like a wave in the ocean or a lake, a large lake, right? Or a small lake, they also have ripples too. But just feel that expansion and contracting. And again, if you're thinking too much, inhale up. And pull that energy down, all your thoughts. And just pull the energy down. And this is amazing, pulling down heaven. Because your hands are electromagnetic, shoulders relaxed. It actually creates more space in your head, in your brain. And also calms you down as well. This is pulling all that energy, because thoughts are energy forms, forms of energy as well. And you're just pulling them down and then dissipating them into the earth, right? So now that we opened up our pathways, energetic pathways, the meridians and the auric field, we're just going to go ahead and do the physical joints because that's where energy can get bottlenecked a little bit because they have to flow through your body, but they also can get hampered um, as well or hindered, right? So let's go ahead and start with the feet. Just pick one foot. Just go ahead and circle. Again, you can rest it. You don't have to lift it up. You can just circle it on the floor. I lift it up so that you can see what my feet are doing. I think there's some. And then again, just just tilt your head away from it or towards it. But notice that as the leg is moving, you can feel it. You know, up here as well. If you just drop your head or pull away or whatever it is that you're doing with your neck. And go ahead and bring the foot back and just notice if you feel something different about that leg versus the other one, right? So let's continue on up the leg to the knees. So straighten that knee out again and not lock. Again, I know I'm slightly bent with this I'm on a footstool. And we're just going to rub on either side of the kneecap. I like to rub with the edges of my hand because the small intestine um, meridian. But you can rub with the whole hand or the palm of the hand. This is a big energy point there. And just notice what that creates, the, the create more energy. And then again, just the front and back knee. And we're also going to do another activity, which is right here on the outside of the leg, the stomach 36. We're just going to activate it. You can also just gently pat it. And then you can just gently pat down the leg or rub down the leg. And then come up, open the knees, and rub it inside. And in fact, let's go ahead and dig a little bit on the uh, either side. So the outside is a a uh, large intestine neural lymphatic point inside is a small intestine neural lymphatic point, which is going to activate those as well. And now notice again, spread your toes, relax. And just notice the what you notice about that leg into the hip, into the feet, into the earth, and versus this other one. Is there a sense of aliveness? Like this leg is awake, this leg feels like it might be still a little bit dense or a little bit asleep still. If you want to use that. So just notice how expansive this might feel and how like, like dense or asleep or um, it just feels a, a little bit different to me. Okay? All right. Let's go ahead and open up the second leg. All right. So go ahead and extend it out again and just go ahead and circle it so you can rest it on the floor. I'm lifting mine up because so that you can see what I'm doing. And again, you can just bring your head away from that or towards it. And then you're going to feel it. And then just hold the position. And then you're going to feel, again, you can relax that. It's best if you relax that by, by resting the heel on the floor. And as you circle, you might feel it up here. You might feel it nowhere. You just feel that here. Okay. And then just go ahead and just move the head a little bit as you circle. And just notice that your head moves almost in the same circular direction as your feet. That's only natural, right? It's very interesting. Go ahead and bring that foot back. Hopefully you can reverse direction. I, mean, I don't think I said that out loud. I apologize, right? <sighs> I hope you remind because I said in my head. <laughs> All right, go ahead and extend that leg out. And then we're going to go up to the knees. Again, I like the edges of my hand, the small intestine, 
Floridian to be on the edge of the kneecaps because I feel like it seems like energize that. And then you can just use the flat palms and just come down the sides of the knees and feel the energy of the flat palms and one in front, one in back, and also around the outside, the 736. Again, you can rub it, you can pat it, you can pat down the legs or rub, whichever way you prefer. Again, there's no right or wrong in doing anything. It's just always your choice in the moment. And you can modify and do whatever works for you as well. And then just close your eyes and go inside and compare the first leg with the second leg. And even your hands, your hands may feel a little bit warmer, right? And then wiggle your toes and notice that, oh my gosh, I can feel when I wiggle my toes, it's, it's stuff is in front of my uh, calves are moving, right? In front of your shin bones because there's tendon on the top, right? That goes in. But you might even feel it, you know, into the ankle or somewhere else. Just notice what you notice, right? Open your eyes. Now let's go ahead and open up the hips. So hips, let's just go ahead and just walk the hips. So rock to one side. Again, you're not lifting this hip up, this hip up. You are moving the rib cage off it so that just gently comes up. So it's not about working. It's not about exercising and working hard. It is about the mechanics of your body and how to make it the movements easy and gentle for your body. Because you're still engaging some muscles, but not to the 100%, all right? So just rocking back and forth. And what happens if you hold on to your rib cage, right? And you don't shift it off to the side. If you don't shift it off to the side, can you lift that? Can you feel the amount of work, right? Again, don't use, don't work so hard. But notice that if I don't take this weight off, this is work to bring this up. And you can feel your muscles inside engaging to get that up, right? So it's best if we slide the rib cage away, slide it away, and all of a sudden it's the movement. Just, but can you feel, as you're holding your rib cage, can you feel that your rib cage not only slides, but it kind of pulls up, right? So just, it may not, and don't pull up if it's not, but just notice that you slide, how much easier, and all of a sudden it's like, it's like, it's, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like you're holding a string and, oh, maybe a marionette, and the feet are just like, because you're, you're doing this, I guess, or out of the way. I, I don't know if that's, that's probably not a good analogy. Anyways, all right, forward and back. Just, uh, just bring your chest forward or your belly forward, actually not your chest. And then put one hand in front of your chest, one hand in front of your lower belly. So just rocking back and forth the pelvis. But notice that if you held your chest free, right, how, and you just move your belly forward, can you feel the work of your back, right? And if you just hold the chest, but put, push the belly back, can you feel that? That is work, that is effort, that is, but if you just allow your body to sink, Allow your body to gently arch and open up. So again, get that sensation of expansion and contraction, but in an easy manner, not with force, right? Not effort, but just by relaxation and relaxing into the movement. And can you feel how your hands come close and come apart? Even though they're not moving, they're just, so there's a lot of movement in your spine. Your spine is so there's 33 joints in there, right? Each joint. Why do you have joints? So that you can bend and change direction, right? And move, right? So it's ease of movement. A lot of times we lose that over time because we don't, uh, we tend to move in the same pattern or we use the whole, you know, not use the whole spine, we just use parts, body parts. It's a making this a whole body twist and then the body comes out, right? So initiating it from here, right, from the belly, into the spine and out the arms. All right, so hopefully your spine is very loose and maybe you notice that your legs feel awake, your body feels awake, your rib cages, because of you touching it and moving it has become awake. And let's go ahead and just open up the uh, shoulders a little bit. So shoulders, mm. just bring them up slowly towards the, ears and notice can you see feel the effort all right 
So go ahead and relax them and notice how far they go. And then just gently, don't go as far, but just where does the effort begin? Right about here, right? So keep it there, low, all right? And then just slowly circle back. But you notice that there's effort to go back, right? So again, smaller, smaller circles. Engage the belly. Drop the head, circling around to the front. Again, don't come, don't, don't come up very high. Notice where the effort comes from. So there's small circle. But can you feel other parts of your body also efforting, trying to move the shoulders as well? Okay, so just relax those as well. And let's reverse the circle. So again, slowly bring them up towards the ears, but not reaching. So where then you feel like, oh, I gotta contract, just stay there, or back off a little bit and relax. Relax the belly and then bring the shoulders forward. Drop the head weight. Back to the middle. And then towards the back, but don't force it back. So smaller circles, right? And let's do it. Just small circles back a few times, small circles forward a few times, and then go big. Can you feel that? When you do it bigger, it's like, oh my God, this is so much easier. I, there's like hardly any effort now because you've woken up all the parts, right? Way more parts accessible to you. So all of a sudden the movements, even though you're going big, it's like, oh, it's not as effortful, right? Maybe. All right, go ahead and shake it off. And we're gonna go ahead and just bring your hands forward. We're gonna turn the hands out. Again, making sure the hands are right in front of you. Alignment, right? Bring the fingers in. Touching the thumbs right here and just relax, okay? Again, notice where do you like it? Would you prefer them to be further down? Would that be more relaxing? Where do you want your weight, right? Your hands are in front now, so now there's weight to hold up. So again, you might want to shift the weight back a little bit and then just rotate them around. Again, relax. What would make this easier and more weightless, right? And feel the expansion and contraction. And again, don't force yourself to expand or contract, it's just with your intention, all right? And then just go ahead and let those hands go. <sighs> and feel how long your neck is as well, right? Let's go ahead and just fold the ball and just push down. So we're just doing connecting heaven and earth, a different version of it. So one palm up, one palm out. And then as the hand is coming up, whichever, look away from that elbow, just turn. And notice how you turn. You know, already noticing that your ribs and your waist may be turning and even pulling on your legs because we've woken up everything, bring them together. Inhale and then exhale, push up. And then as you're pushing up, relax the shoulder, just slowly turn away from that elbow. And just notice, are you turning easier on one side than the other? Turn back, so contracting. Inhale or exhale. And are you more upright? Is it easier to turn? Connecting with the breath, you can inhale here as, as well, or exhale here, it does not matter. But just notice the ease of what you notice, what the movements are. Again, not with force. Don't push. Just expand. And you notice where the effort comes from, right? But right about here, it's like I have to force it to keep, keep it going. So just back off a little bit from that turning point. And then just go ahead and bring the hands together. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Let's do it the other way. Let's draw the ball up. Feel that, exhale, sink. And then do it the other way again, open sideways. How does that feel? What is, what is moving? What's going on? And then turn the palms face again. So let's make it all together into one continuous movement. Can you feel the difference with the two moves? Can you feel the chest opening? And coming back together. 
And can you feel the chest lifting and contracting? How the two sensations, right, feel very different or a little different. Different requirement. All right, this time just go ahead and let it go. All right, that was our, our little warm up. And I'm going to continue seated as we're going through some of our uh, forms, um, different forms, and then we'll go stand. But you're welcome to stand up um, right now as well. But notice how you are seated. Like we have a tendency to bring our knees in sometimes, or sometimes we're just very relaxed and then go out because we have it. And but I always notice once I do the warm up, I have a tendency to bring my feet further out. Okay, because my muscles are more. Um, my doctors are more relaxed, so they're not wanting to, you know, self-protect, right? Um, so I'm more relaxed, I'm more open, I'm feeling a lot more energy flow. So again, just notice where you want your feet and where you want your body. Again, think about alignment, so gently when you're seated, weights over the sits bones, but if you can, tuck your chin slightly so that aligns the head more over your pelvic bowl, okay? And then just, you know, feet wherever they want to be. All right, and let's go ahead. And if you're standing, again, bring your feet in and weight back towards the center of your heels. But if you are tightening up the front of the back, um, just go ahead and bring the weight uh, centered over your feet if that's more comfortable for you. All right, take a breath. And then let's go ahead and do, let's begin with connecting heaven and earth. If you did a version of that, let's do it, um, you know, what we usually do. So go ahead and draw the energy up from the earth into the dying hand, into the lower belly. And then just bring one hand over the top, holding the ball, and then press up. But this time you're gonna go out. And go out to the side. And again, you can have your hands, you know, facing in, facing out, wherever you want your palms. And we're gonna go ahead and gently press out a little bit more. And we're gonna inhale, tuck your chin, and then turn the head as you exhale. Again, don't force, soften, don't do big movements, do a smaller, you can still engage the fascia, bring it together, feel the two hands together, and then slide them out. One goes out, one goes down, connecting with heaven and earth. Again, notice where the effort is from your back or from your belly, relax the belly to do this, all right? Inhale here, press the palms further away. If that's comfortable, if it's not, don't worry, just keep you both know, connected. And then exhale, tuck the chin, and then turn the head. All right, so hopefully you felt that stretch. And then let's do it from the center. Okay, instead of going out, all right, just do it from the center, all right? And then inhale, and then exhale, right from the center. You know how solid you feel right here along the midline of the body, and how much easier this movement may feel. But even this rotation, you might feel some fascia turning as well, right? Some connectedness. All right, go ahead and just hold the ball and then release the ball, either pushing it or just gently releasing it, letting it go. Either way, whatever your imagination does. And then go ahead and inhale up, pushing up sky, interlacing the fingers and hopefully backwards if you remember to do so, the non habitual way. And then just go ahead and bend. Again, not a big bend, right? You're not, this is not an exercise. This is just about feeling your body, all right? And then just release the hands. And as this arm pulls, pull your body back up, right? Yeah, where do the arms want to be? This is effort. They might, I might want to be right here, all right? So just, again, not a shoulder height. If that is forceful, just be aware. Again, expanding out, inhale. Interlace your fingers backwards if you didn't do that the first time with a non habitual way. And we're going to bend the other way with a shh down, okay? So inhale here, just push up gently, and then shh. Keep the shoulders down, relax. And then upright the body as the arm pulls. Yeah, where do you want your arms? Where are the shoulders working? Relax the shoulders. And then go up and exhale all the way back. So that was lifting up sky. And now, so my shoulders are already talking to me because uh, for some reason that movement just, let's do the tiger as well. Tiger is about aligning the shoulders. 
So you just bring the energy up, and then you're going to exhale up, palms facing up. Think again, don't push. Can you feel that expansion relax as you expand up and down at the same time, and then bring it down and follow down? Oops. So you're going to grab something, and then you got to open up. So you grasp with something, I'm sorry, grasping something, inhale up, draw the energy up, and then open up the hand, push up the sky, and then grasping something, bring that energy down, inhale, relax the shoulders, and just follow the, sh follow the hands down, because for some reason that movement aligns the shoulders, um, and it just helps the shoulders to kind of reset themselves. Um, it's a very good uh, exercise, um, but as, again, doing it as relaxed as possible. All right, so now love letters. So bring your energy to your middle dantian or your heart chakra in the Indian system. So this is the middle dantian. Um, so we have a lower, middle, and upper dantian. We can work with this one. All about sending out love and receiving love, okay? So love, kindness, gratitude, peace, whatever it is you have desired more of. Inhale it in and let's send it out. So if you're standing, you can step out, step forward if you wish. Inhale. Again, lower your barriers. Allow that energy, kindness, and then exhale out. Send that out. Again, don't go too far. Small movements. Where is the effort? Do your hands want to be up here or do they want to be lower? Always notice the amount of effort there is. But your, your mind, your imagination is expanding all the way up into the sky with your hands, but also down through your sits bones, through your tailbone, and down through your feet as well. So expanding in all directions. And you bring that energy down. Love, kindness, gratitude, peace, joy, whatever it is you desire, the world's happy. And let's grab that energy that we desire for the world. And let's draw it right up the spine to the pituitary gland or to the brain. And then exhale. And then you want to watch your hands because energy, right? Your eyes follow the movement. And the energy follows wherever your eyes go. All right. Both hands together. Draw. Elephant raises his trunk. Bring the energy up. Relax. Whenever you're ready, exhale. Okay, hands on your belly. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to just uh, massage the belly a little bit. But first, connect with it. Like, like have a conversation. Like, hey, I'm here, you know. Um, how you doing, right? Uh, because we don't talk to our black bodies a lot, and our body, you know, is trying to talk to us all the time. So when you don't listen, uh, it tells you by with pain and discomfort, right? So it has little whispers, starting with little discomforts. Oh, this doesn't quite feel right, whatever, uh, or you know, a little, you know, tightness here, whatever. It's just you need to have a little kink, you know, worked out. But oftentimes it's screaming at us with pain. All right, we gotta go ahead and just. Fold your hands together, cupping them one over the other, and start at the, uh, just underneath the rib cage. We're gonna go down the left side. So don't, uh, you're gonna do the same thing I am, so you gotta look down, you gotta go down the left side, and all the way across to the right side, and then come up to the bottom of the rib cage. We're gonna do this three times. It actually moves a lot of energy, because when you cup your hands, it actually focuses uh, the energy that's available in your hands. So, and you're doing this rocking motion, so you're actually massaging the energy in as well. So, we're going in the direction of the uh, large intestine. So, and now feel how your hot your hands are. Maybe. I don't know, uh, but it might be. All right, so turtle in on the shell. And so, we're going to expand again, not with force, right? So, do the movement small or in a relaxed manner, but think. Expanding in all directions. So inhale. So you're inflating yourself like those inflatable uh, you know, advertising, uh, you know, balloons or not balloons, um, inflatable man, I guess you would call it, or inflatable panda. I've seen them. Inflatable pandas, right? So they pump air and they just kind of float up with air, right? 
So just have that sensation and have the energy go up, but it's going up, but it's going down at the same time as well. Excellent. Again, think expansion large. Your body waking up, moving out in all directions, forward, back, up, above and below, but relaxed, okay? And out your fingertips and out your feet, out the front and back of your spine as well, the top of your head. All right, then just see that. And you can go ahead and rub the belly as well. All right, so just now notice how your body feels. And we're gonna come to a standing position. You're welcome to remain seated. It's just that if you're going to continue on uh, with this seated position, just make sure that when we're moving our legs, that you're 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 supporting your leg uh, with your feet, so that your leg is always supported. So you're not lifting it up to do these exercises. You can move them uh, to a certain degree, uh, but only what's comfortable and keep them small. All right. So and notice how remember uh, yesterday we practiced uh, squatting because if you have a chair underneath you. You're, you're, you can squat, but we're gonna do our super bringing good before we get up. So we're gonna go ahead and bring the left hand across to grab the right ear lobe, right hand across to grab the left ear lobe, tongue tip to the roof of your mouth, just behind um, your front teeth. So you're gonna put your nose over your toes. So you might wanna sit back up a little bit, okay? And then stand up. So you might wanna exhale here, or you might wanna exhale here. Wherever it feels good to you. So you are squatting, and you don't have to sit back down. You can just do little squats. But notice how that changes. If you don't have a chair, it's like, oh, I can't. But make sure your knees don't come forward. It's a squat, but you're just stopping in the middle. It's not a full squat. You're just going into the chair and resting in between. All right? Okay, so go ahead and squat again. Inhale as you go down, exhale as you come up. If you don't, if you're not, you know, doing a full squat. Or actually, whatever works. Okay? All right, go ahead and if you're coming to the standing position, move the chair to one side. And notice how you are standing. And just shift your weight side to side. You know, and move your body around. And you can even just move your, your pelvis around to just notice. Relax the belly. Okay? All right, and then go ahead and generate your chi, and maybe your hands are warmer, maybe they're not, don't know. And then just notice what you notice, okay? And then just rub the kidneys, and usually I can feel a lot more heat uh, because my energy's moving, my chi is moving, right? So I just notice that a lot. So step a little bit wider. Again, feet slightly turn in, that's comfortable for your knees. If it's not, go ahead and just put your feet wherever it's, it's comfortable for you. You're going to shift your weight, so shift your weight by moving your hips and shoulders go for the ride and then turn, okay? And then the arms are long and relaxed. Tuck your chin so you're in alignment, right? Your head is over. Again, if this is too much for your knees, just bring them in a little bit. Make the movement smaller if you're having pain or discomfort anywhere. All right, you never want to create pain or discomfort. And I've heard of people that, uh, you know, it's a Tai Chi class. It's a low key Tai Chi class. And I'm sore afterwards. It's because you are efforting. And there's nothing wrong with that because we are. We are all, you know, doers and achievers and, and we all want to do the best we can. So, but Tai Chi is teaching you the way we were meant the way we were designed to do things in a relaxed manner gentle manner without force but we've learned from um, ever since we were young we can force through things oh that doesn't go we're going to force it through right oh i can't do this i'm going to force it through so a lot of times we just out of habits um so we do that so i cheese about resetting you know, your beliefs and uh, resetting your body so that you can work as a team with your body, a whole body movement, so all the movement becomes easier. What if life was designed to be easy and movements are supposed to be easy instead of forceful, right? And what if that is giving you more access to your body, right? Um, so that it can move as a whole, and that is the key to aging well, right? So everything I said, inhale up, exhale, pull that down. 
because please don't believe everything I say, don't believe anything that you, um, or don't believe everything that you read or see or whatever. But if something tickles your fancy, if something makes you smile, then that might be something that might work for you. But not everything works for you or is applicable to you at all. All right, let it go, shake it up. Let's go ahead and shake it up. Let's jiggle our water molecules and just shake it up. And then you can also just, you know, just shake up your arms and so forth, okay? And then we're also going to go ahead and just move our chi. So we're going to trace our all our meridians as well, all right? So go ahead and shake it off. This is called the chi shower. So as if you're washing your face up and over the top of your head, down to the top of the shoulders, in at the armpit. Down the sides of the rib cage, follow the rib cage back to the kidney, rub the kidneys here, and then go ahead and come down to the tailbone, out at the hips, down the outside of the legs. Again, if you just want to trace them, you can, but I find that if I pat down, it's more energizing to me, but you don't have to, okay? I just like to pat everywhere, and then go ahead and just down the inside of the arm, up the outside, and you'll notice that we're tracing basically figure eight patterns. This is how energy travels in your body. So make sure you get right here the out of boy, out of girl points, right? There's a lot of congestion in there for acupuncture points. And this time, bring your feet in a little bit. We're going to stretch up. And then you can stretch up one arm at a time. You can go up like the ball your feet. But again, don't bring the shoulders up with force. Keep them down, relax. But you're stretching, and you're stretching if you were elastic, right? Keep the shoulders relaxed, and you're just stretching, and then let the, let the elastic come back, right? Rub down the outside, and then holding at a, well, I want to stand a little bit wider, and then dig into the earth. Knee soft, breathe, again, that elastic is being stretched, or you can think of yourself as a slinky, right? You're folding over the stair, a step of stair or something, or the floor, and then come up the inside, and then fold one hand over the belly, the other hand over that. Take a breath. Ah, just let your body sway a little bit. Imagine your roots going in the earth. All right, and then go ahead and shake it off. All right, so you can talk about, you know, expansion being lightness and contraction being heaviness as well. So we're going to do a little exercise that I haven't done in a very long time. So um, you're going to go ahead and we're just going to expand the expansive. You can expand out this way, any way you want. But as you expand out, you're going to say the words, I feel sad. Can you feel, the minute those words come out, can you feel your body contracting? It can't even go out, right? All right, and then just allow the hands to come back. So contract, listen. Okay. So um, now when you are contracting, right? Sinking down in, right? Now really ex uh, exaggerate that contraction. So you're really coming in, you're coming in, you're, you know, like you're closing up. And now say the words, I feel happy. <laughs> Can you feel like you know, it, 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 it can't get there, right? So be expansive, joyful, happy, right? It's it's so your body expresses your emotions. Haven't you seen people who you know are extremely happy? Their movements are large, they are, you know, playful. But if you see someone who's sad, they are, their shoulders are crunched in, they have frowns on their faces. So your body expresses your emotion, right? How you're feeling inward. But every now and then, if you just think expansive, if you're feeling sad, that can just immediately change your demeanor, your state of mind, whatever, right? So your body can only exist in the emotions that you are trying to express. So if you want to change that, that's a great way. So you can just make yourself happy by expanding out. And this is a great one as well. If you just look up to the sky, right? Opening up yourself and again, lower all your walls, 
And this is called Heaven Rushing In. It's great for lowering your blood pressure. Again, don't, don't hold your shoulders up. If it's too hard for you, you can just have it down, have it lower. But your palms are facing up to the sky, and you're not dropping your head up, and you're just looking up. But you're just imagining all that energy coming in, heaven rushing in, all that joy and all that radiance and happiness. And you're just, you're just like a receptacle, like a, like a satellite dish. You're just receiving the signals, right? So all that joy and happiness. So that's heaven rushing in. And that's a great one to do every now and then. And again, my shoulders are talking to me. So let's go ahead and swing our arms a little bit and let them go. Ah. And then, because we oftentimes, our arms are down here. We're not, you know, we don't, you know, move them around. So just, you know, you can also just do a giant march if you want to, okay? Or you could just, you know, let's do figure eight pattern, right? And those are wonderful as well because they are moving energy around your energetic field too. But they're moving your arms in unusual positions. We don't usually do this. So try to keep the movement smaller, right? Don't go so far. But every now and then, once you warm up, you can go bigger, right? So just don't start big, start small, and then go up. All right, go ahead and shake that off. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the gallbladder meridian. Before we do that, let's do the belt flow. We're going to change the energy around. So go ahead and bring your hands to the back, where the behind the belly button, and bring the energy from the back all the way across, and then down the outside, the opposite leg. Same thing on the other side. Bring that energy across the front, and then down the outside, the opposite leg. All right, and then gallbladder meridian. We're going to do what's called the, the teapot. So you're just going to connect right here. So it's like Right behind, it's not on the, uh, the lateral line, it's slightly behind, like where that attaboy, girl where you're patting. Again, if it's too forceful, don't force your hand to go there, go wherever it's comfortable for you. And then you're the little teapot, and you're just gonna pour out the tea. And just notice how you pour out the tea, what's moving, what's not, up your chin. Inhale in the middle, switch hands, and then exhale, pour out the tea. So believe it or not, we're working the gallbladder meridian. We're actually giving a stretch to the gallbladder meridian. So just notice how, what is tight, what's holding you, what's stretching. We're gonna open up the gallbladder meridian, all right? So just two points. The top of the femur, the top of the thigh bone comes right into the hips. And I just like to rub right in the top, all around the top of the bone. And then I'm gonna extend my hands down to the side. And where the middle finger is, you're gonna go ahead and rub that point. So that is gallbladder 30 and 31. And we're gonna go right back and do the teapot again, all right? So another little experiment. So go ahead and connect. And all of a sudden notice, maybe you have more ability to go back. Something has changed or shifted. Again, tuck the chin. So your body's in alignment, feet turned in, right? Pour out the tea. And notice, can you bend further with greater ease? Again, don't force yourself. Just notice that your bend has so much more flexibility, more relaxation, more ease, right? And you don't feel that tension. Like before, I could feel my, my inside uh, uh, in the psoas uh, pulling, and that, that is gone now, okay? So just by moving energy, moving chi, gallbladder, 30 and 31, that and again you can move your hips forward and back a little bit to just feel how you're holding again not in the over extreme pattern but just slightly over and then you can just play with it so not in the extreme foot court uh, uh, bend um, just notice all right so go ahead and just uh, rub that out so if you hurt yourself anywhere or sides or whatever just go ahead and rub it because your hands are healing Anytime you bring your hands anywhere, it will help to um, release or move that energy into that chi. So now we're going to go ahead and serve some dim sum with the tea. All right. So we're going to do it in a, a slightly different manner. We're going to go ahead and do a bow and arrow stance. A bow and arrow stance is one foot forward, backwards out. But if you notice, I'm, I'm doing it to an angle, but it's the leg is not behind me. It is still like there's um, two par parallel rails. Okay. But my front foot is pointed towards towards you, but notice my foot is angled in slightly. That's what I um, I prefer. 
but you can do it whichever way uh, it works for your knees and your, your structure, all right? But I'm doing it at an angle because anytime you do it not the usual way, it just feels a little bit different, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna shift our weight forward, we're gonna serve them some, right? And try to keep that back heel down, all right? And try not to bring that knee forward. All right, so you're gonna this back and you're gonna turn, you're gonna turn this arm in, up and over. Again, don't over twist, okay? And then back. So leading, and you're almost like leading with this hand. This hand, the other hand is leading, following, but not doing as much, too much of a movement, right? So just make it as smooth as possible. So they're both moving, but because you're turning the waist, this hand is moving way more. Isn't that interesting? All right, let's do it to the other side. Again, settle into your bow and arrow stance first. Relax. If that's too far, you can just do it, you know, slightly. It doesn't matter. Or you can just do it, you know, standing and with both legs just facing that direction. That's also fine. It's whatever would work for you. All right. Always honor your body. All right, on this side. Showing somebody the tray of goodies, right? And then circle out, twist, shifting your way back and turning the waist. Up and over, relax. And then showing them the tray again with all the little appetizers, little dim sum. And you can just shift your weight any way you want and then present. And you don't have to turn your waist, but notice how much more this hand is moving, right, than this hand. And then present. And then allow it to descend. So try to keep the back heel down so that uh, a lot of times we, we come up and we do a uh, much larger movement. But by trying to keep that heel down, you are actually stretching more, you're moving more. Um, but again, not with force, okay? If it's not comfortable to keep it back down, you can just always come up. Um, always do what works for you. Modify everything I say to do whatever works for you. All right. So we are doing our little form at the end. Again, you, you may not have learned it, and it's okay. Just it's four steps forward, four steps back. One, we're, I'm changing the form on Zoom because one step out, one step back. Okay, usually it's three steps out, but then I get off the screen. It makes it form long. And then we're going to do open the gate. Again, opening a gate is about opening up your hip joints, right? So your right leg is going to come up, left foot, opening the gate. So this, is, uh, this hip is staying closed, but this hip is going to open up. You're going to feel that leg opening up. You can feel that opening up, and then bring it back in. All right, and the same thing on this side. Open the gate, flex the foot. Out to the side, back in. And again, if you're seated, just go ahead and you can just you know, do these movements. This is still impo Im important, this movement, because you want your hip joints, right? Your hip joints are, you know, a socket, ball and socket. And you want to be able to have those mobility um, always, right? All right, go ahead and rub wherever you are sore. And then let's go ahead and just tap and making sure our energy is flowing well for this movement. And anytime your hands are moving, think about expanding and contracting. So expanding out and then coming back in. All right, so in a whole body way, if you can. And again, not force, just with your imagination or your intention. All right, and smile. All right, let's begin. Connecting with earth, let your weight sink down. Draw the energy up. Again, expanding, waking up. Falling asleep. I am uh, mirroring you, all right? So I'm turning this foot out and I step straight forward, parting more horses. Step straight through, parting more horses. Meet. Again, it's a tossing of the frisbee, but your weight is shifting forward, and then you're going to rock back, turn this foot out. And then step straight through, brush knee. Again, small movements, don't do a big. Rock back. Step 
and then brush knee on second step. All right, bring this back foot so it's parallel. I'm gonna step back a little bit so you can see my feet. They're parallel, right? You gotta shift your way back. So you gotta pivot on the front heel and you gotta turn, push your left. All right, four steps back. Bring it in and then step back. Shifting your way back. So again, you have to come up onto your heel. So it's almost weightless, right? And then step back. Relax your toes. If you're gripping your toes, you're efforting again. But notice, you might be efforting in your thumbs as well. Okay? So that means that you're, just notice where, where you are uh, tense and so forth, okay? So crossing your wrists in front, parting the clouds, inhale up. Exhale down. <sighs> and then just one side step to your right, my left. Side step, and again, you're hugging this invisible tree, right? And then weights on the right, you can step out left, and the left hand comes around, and you're hugging this invisible tree. Relax the shoulders, tuck the chin. Right? And now go ahead and inhale up, so it's standing up, right? Opening up the gate and then relax, sinking back in. Inhale up. Oops. All right. Scoop and gather, closing the form. So you're just drawing the energy up from the earth. Inhale, draw it in. Release, sink down. Again, you're not sinking with your knees bent. Uh, I exaggerate my motions. Inhale up, so you're not reaching up. You're just expanding up with your intention. Okay, so don't reach for the sky. Don't reach for the earth. Let's try that again. You're just in your imagination. You're not exaggerating your movements. What would that look like? What would that feel like? Easier, lighter. Standing up into the heavens, but standing down into the earth as well. And then just sink it. Bring one hand over the belly, lower belly, and the other hand over that. Close your eyes if you can. If you can't, just look down at a 45 degree angle. And then let your body sway and relax as much as you can. Notice that you have tension in your back, in your thighs, maybe in your toes, maybe in your hands. Maybe your shoulders, and can you please soften those? You still have to have tension because you're standing upright. You're still using the muscles to maintain your upright structure. However, you can still soften and relax, right? And think from this space, right? Scanning from the top of your head down to your feet and beyond, and back up again and beyond. Notice that. There's less places that you stop at, right? There's less blockages or things are moving, perhaps. And feel that space that is inside you, around you, above you, below you, front and back, left and right, in and out. And think happy thoughts, right? And what does that do to your body? And if you think worry thoughts, can you still keep that space without shrinking? If you maintain space and you think of sad thoughts or disturbing thoughts or things that are upsetting you, if you just, instead of collapsing your space, just expand out, all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's not such a big deal. It's okay. And you are 99% space. All right, take your middle finger and just go ahead and tap in between your eyebrows. Take a breath, feel how good you feel. And uh, let's go ahead and close our session together. So the sun and the moon together and take a bow to one another. Thank you all for being here. I hope you stay cool uh, in, in this June day. And uh, thank you. And just notice how your body feels. And remember to use more of your body. So it's just forcing back off and relax first and then 
softly, slowly go into that movement. Sometimes you don't have the option to go slow, but just notice what that creates because you're engaging more of your, accessing more of your body through relaxation and, uh, and use your body as it was designed to do. And you'll have more strength and more flexibility at the same time. All right, thank you very much.